Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now at the moment, at the moment I'm just surrounded by dolphins. <laughs> yeah, the plan today is going to be a bit of a mixed day. These guys have shown me there's some fish around, so I'm going to try and get some bait. Then after that, I'm going to go and try and throw some <laughs> I'm going to go and try and throw a couple of lures around on a reef and maybe if the conditions are fine I'll put the anchor down in the afternoon Just going to be a bit of a mixed day But The sun's just coming up There's fish around the boat It's a good day to be out One of the only problems about there being that many dolphins around Is all the mackerel are pinned to the sea but they're laying flat on the sand I have to try and stay out the way I have managed to pick up some fantastic mackerel. One little one, perfect for a live bait, and the rest of them have been quite big. But yeah, all the mackerel are <laughs> like hiding in the sand. Don't know if you can still see the dolphins, they're down over there now. Yeah, lovely to see. No matter how many times I see them, they always brighten your day, don't they? There we go. Fishing with lures on reef, you generally need a bit of tide running. Certain areas of reef fish different. One area reef that fishes best with like a knot, a knot and a half. Another one fishes better when it's almost half a knot. So what I'm doing here is, we haven't got very big tides today, but it was just too good an opportunity to miss. The conditions are just too nice to miss. I'm on my way to go and try and anchor up in the afternoon. And I thought what I would do is I would just flick a couple of lures around, try and sneak out a fish on the lures on the way. There's quite a lot of porpoise around, I don't know if you get to see them. But yeah, the lures that I'm fishing with at the moment, just 20 and 30 gram. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, he didn't want to stop, did he? On the smaller tides, the fish are often quite sluggish and they're sitting down near the bottom. They're a fantastic sport on this light gear. Brilliant. <laughs> they really are fantastic sport on this light tackle. That's a 7 to 24 gram lure rod. And I think this is a 30 gram lure. But look at that. Perfect. Unfortunately, I have got a sun behind me, so I'm going to be silhouetted, but <laughs> it's just how it goes. But yeah. In fact, actually, I'm going to get a photo of that. That's a beauty. There you are. Straight back. Brilliant. Fantastic way to start. Right. I think I'll try that again. Yeah. It's just an Abu Ike 7 to 24 gram low rod, a pen clash 2 3000, 25 pound braid, 20 pound fluoro leader. That's fine. 
and a little crazy eel. Now different fish, they generally live different areas in the water. Like I say, pollock when there's a bit of tide running, bass when there's a bit of tide running, they're usually higher up in the water. Rass, you get them tight on the bottom, cod, you get them tight on the bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm dropping right to the bottom, giving it two or three bounces on the bottom to see if there's a, see if there's a cuddling down there. Ooh. When you're dropping your lure down, you're better off feathering it down like this, because if a fish picks it up on the way down, you'll find out about it. Dropping it down, giving a couple of bounces. There's a fish just caught to make this. Is it there? Oh, go on, check it. Oh! <laughs> There's something down there chasing it, something small, probably schooly bass, because I feel them keep plucking at the tail. I will do a little bit of a video of what's on the sound array so I know, so I can show you what I can see. Because yeah, when I dropped down, I could see some fish rose up to reach them, to, to meet this load. There it is. Oh. Tell you what, that feels like a decent fish, that. <laughs> I knew it was there, I could see it on the sounder. Another lovely pollock. That is a stunner. That is a fantastic fish. Oh, look at that one. Good gut on it. <laughs> He's a right chunk. This one has been in the wars a little bit. He's got a couple of wounds on his sides. That there, look, I don't know if you can see it. By my hand here. That is a bite mark. There's been something I'd hold of him. Like a seal or something. But yeah, again, absolutely smashed that lure. <laughs> two for two, fantastic. I'm gonna get another foot with this and just pop the hook. That lure's taking a bit of a battering now. Head first, down it goes. Yeah, unfortunately, this, this low's taking a bit of hammering. Might have to perform a little bit of surgery on it. I'm going to go and try that little drift again. That was brilliant. Right, what we had is, this is the seabed here. This line here was my lure dropping down. And as soon as it got to there, I saw some fish rise up off the bottom. Now this, all these little marks here, these moustaches, these are all fish. Now you saw again, I dropped through, I brought my lure up, so that line there is my lure. Brought it up, one chased it, I missed it, dropped it down again right into the fish, then hooked one of them, and this is me playing that other fish up to the surface. So these marks here, I knew were fish. Dropped down, 
picked one up, missed it, dropped down again, picked it up, played it up. Brilliant. When you're anchoring up, you want the conditions to all be in the same direction, ideally. Wind and tide together would be ideal. But if you can't have that, then you at least want them to be stable. So as in the wind's in one direction and the tide's in one direction, and they don't move. Because especially when you're trying to anchor up onto a wreck, you need to be precise. I knew I had an hour left of the flood. There would have been no point me anchoring up straight away. Because I might have got the anchor right and sat on a wreck. And as soon as the tide changed and swung round, I'll be way off it. So I thought I'll kill an hour. Fishing with lures. And then I go and put the anchor down. And so far I've managed to get out two stunning pollock. Very sluggish fight. Oh, that's why. Because this one's a ling. <laughs> You're thinking that's not fighting like a cod or a pollock. And the reason being is because it's a little ling. <laughs> well, I was not expecting that. Ha 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 ha. Ling have got loads of sharp teeth. I'll be surprised if this lure has survived this. But they have got some lovely colorations, haven't they? When they're young like this, they take on like a real motley color. You can see it properly. Yeah, usually when I'm targeting these guys, I'm catching them at like 20 pound. This one's about two. <laughs> fish is the fish. Yeah. Oh. God, he has really lashed that up. Down you go, lad. Tell you what I'm gonna do with this. Show you what I'm gonna do with this. Give me a second. Right, I got sent a couple of these by one of our subscribers in America. Uh, people have asked me about them before, and it's called a descender. Now, some fish, when they when they come up from deep water and they blow and they won't go back, there's too much damage. It's internal damage. It's nervous damage. Some fish like that that are still fine, that are caught in shallow water and just haven't got the strength to get back down to depth you can use one of these. If this is just a really basic one and all you do comes, I will I will tag into the description of this video, these, the details of this. But it is basically a spike like that. You attach this to your rod and I'm going to attach a eight ounce lead to the other end of it. And basically what you do is you hook this hook into the fish's mouth Lower it over the side, the lead carries it down to the bottom, you jig the rod, and it pulls the line, it pulls this spike out of the fish's mouth, and the fish is back to depth. Right. There, like that. So all I've done is I've spiked it through like that. And the weight carries it down to the seabed. Like I say, not all fish can be returned like this. I know by looking at that fish, there's nothing wrong with it. It just can't get back down to depth. When their eyes are bulging out, and when you can hear them like shh, like gassing like that, a lot of the damage that's done to them is all internal. So you can't return them. That's when I will take them for the table. There we go, to reach the bottom. There we go. There it is. That fish has been returned now to depth. Brilliant. Let's go and get that anchor down. 
can't help myself. Come over a little bit of reef. It looks promising. So I'll have one more drop before I head over there. Oh, wow. Huh. <laughs> well, that was unexpected. A tripping great squid. <laughs> Yeah, well, that was unexpected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As it is. Calm down. As it is, these are great eating. So I'm going to take this back. And we'll cook this up. But yeah, wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I've mapped the wreck out. There's two wrecks quite close to each other. I might try both of them, but it's the first time that I've anchored on these. <laughs> so I don't quite know how it's gonna work. We'll see, we'll see how we do. Anchoring up in 82 meters of water. So I'm going to let out probably about 200 metres of rope. I do enjoy trying out new things. Trying out new areas of ground, new reefs, new wrecks. New methods, new tackle. Challenging myself. I get stuck doing the same thing for too long. Gets you complacent. Run out the rest of the rope, get a set back at anchor. And I'll see if I've got it right. I get asked this quite a lot about people who uh, have got a similar boat to mine, but a boat that doesn't have a full walk around, which means you can't walk around the front. All I'll do is I'll run the anchor off the side and then I'll tie it off to one of the cleats at the back, pass the rope over the top and then tie it up the front. And now it's tied off up the front take the rope off the cleat and I just use a little piece of 2x4 like that with the hole drilled in this. Just loop the line through it and that way the anchor boy only slides up this far which is about 20 feet from the bow of the boat. Right I've got myself sat back at anchor now you can see the anchor boy just up the front here and you can see it's laid me right up against the wreck that's perfect. What it might end up happening is as we lay back I might have to bring in a couple of 10 feet of rope because instead of being sat right on top of the wreck like that I should really be sat a little bit further away and this is marks of the wreck here so you can see that's where I put my anchor down and it's laid me right up against the wreck perfect first couple of rigs I'm going to send down is going to be a couple of fish locker wrecking rigs. Now I have started producing these in conjunction with Cox and Royal. I'll put a link in the description of the video. But I'm just going to bait them up with some of the fresh mackerel and I'm also going to make a little bit of slop. I'm going to make a smaller two hook rig. I don't know what else there might be down there. Might be a haddock, might be a bream, might be a spur dog, might be pouting, probably pouting. So yeah, I'll get some baits put on here and we'll get them sent down. There we are. Baited up with one of the mackerel I caught earlier. These rigs are perfect for ling and conger. They're good to drop down first now because I don't know how snaggy the wreck is. First time I fished it. I don't know how snaggy the wreck is and I don't know if we're going to move around a little bit. Because the lead is on the bottom, this rig is okay to bounce. If I put a conger rig down, a conger rig has got a hook below the lead so it drags right tight on the bottom. If I put one of those down first, there's a good chance I would lose it. So I'll put this down to test what it's like. And under the other rod, I've just knocked up a small wrecking rig. Try this first with some little tiny strips of mackerel. 
I do love fishing wrecks like this. Because you honestly never know what might be down there. Yeah, on this smaller rig I'm hoping to pick up things like pouting and whiting first. Because that'll give me some type of idea of what the life of the wreck is like. You want there to be a good head of little fish down there. Because that's what the big fish will be feeding on. Big old pouting. <laughs> one, of the <laughs> one of the things that's often quite difficult is being able to admit when it's not working. Being able to figure out that something's just not right. Now, this wreck here, I've had two pouting off it. I've, I've had one fish take a good bite, but that was been it. And I've lost a rig already. So I know it's really snaggy, and there's not an awful lot of fish on it. So I'm going to give it, fish these two baits out for 15 minutes. And if I haven't had at least a decent bite, I'm going to pull up and I'm going to try the other wreck. Because I don't know, this, this wreck might have had a net on it for the past two weeks. Sometimes it's just not fishing right. You need to know when to cut your losses and to go somewhere else. Dolphins have come to see me. Let's get this anchor back up. Just sitting back onto the other wreck. Yeah, that, it's a nice looking wreck. Plenty of structure, but just no fish on it. Strange. Usually with pouting and things like that, you can tell pretty quick if there's going to be some on a wreck. As soon as you put a bait down there, especially fresh mackerel, it just gets chewed up. I'd had a decent bite, but didn't come to anything. Having one fish on a wreck is not, <laughs> not worth giving the day for. Give this wreck a couple of hours, maybe, and if, if this one doesn't produce, doesn't matter. At least if I manage to explore a couple of new wrecks, I'll know for future. <laughs> Oh, we might have a, a flick about with the lows again on the way back. There's no way of knowing unless you try. Oh. <laughs> That's why it was a weird bite, it was a dogfish. Session wouldn't be complete without one. Yeah, that's why it was an unusual bite, it was dogfish. <laughs> Don't often catch them this deep on the wrecks. I was going to say, typical for me to hook it on the light rig. That was a very big fish. Don't even know what it was. <laughs> But yeah, I reckon it's bitten me off. Yeah, bitten clean off. That was a big fish there, you could tell, because even when I lifted into it, just stayed down there, just, just stayed where it was. <laughs> Didn't even bother it. Just kind of like dot, dot, dot. Yeah. That was a big one. So there is one down there. See if we can't get a second rig down there and try and get it out. That was a bit of excitement. It was a like a trembling bite and then just like a doof. And I thought it's picked it up here. And as soon as I lifted into it, it just stayed over, just didn't move. My thoughts is big conger. Ling generally, they like thrash around quite a bit. Yeah, that conger just. Dun, dun, dun. Just nodded its head. Yep. I knew there was one down there.
All this slopping around. That's not a bad sized eel that. I've got a fish on the other rod so I'm going to have to get this off quick. There's a fish on the other rod as well. Yep. Knew they were down there. Yeah, I was just swinging around a little bit and I thought I'll try and reposition myself on the wreck. So I've crabbed along maybe about 30 feet to a different set of the wreck. Another nice eel. Right, well there's this one, I'll put this, this one will be in the 20s, but that's a bigger fish, I'll take bar this off and then get the other one put back as well, but, oh no, oh, you dirty, just pooped everywhere. Dirty, dirty sod. There is poop literally everywhere now. Ugh. You're lucky you can't smell this. No. Handling these big eels like this, you just can't be afraid of them. Because that's when you get bit. Shirt back down. Hey, don't mess about. Right, <laughs> that, that right there is a case of stubbornness pays off. I knew there was fish there because I, I, I hooked into it that lighter rod. I mean, it's typical, isn't it? If you're ever going to hook one, if you're going to hook a big, uh, <laughs> if you're ever going to hook a big fish, it's going to be on the rod that's the lightest one that's not really capable of doing it. So anyway, the bigger reel came on a one hook wrecking rig. This used to be a two hook wrecking rig. But the bottom hook got all chewed up, so I cut it off, made it into a one hook wrecking rig. And all I did was I just flap it off under the mackerel. I'm actually going to send this back down. No, I can't, it's too soft. All I'd done was flap it off under the mackerel, and mounted it like that. Now you'll catch both Ling and Conger fishing like this. But yeah, I knew there was fish there, I'd felt them. And I just thought, I'm not giving up. Even though it's horrible, sloppy conditions now, we're all over the spot, and there's a bit of rain coming. I just thought, I'm not giving up. I've, I've, I've committed myself. <laughs> so yeah, and it's all about getting fish on the feed, because you saw them two eels come on at exactly the same time. So obviously, they've been down there, they've been around, they've just not been on the feed. Anyway, the smell of the fresh mackerel that I've kept putting down has eventually brought them out. And there you go. Now the other rig that I was using is a fish locker conga rig. Those like the wrecking rigs, I've been making them with cox and roll. Now I will, I will have put a link into the description of this video where you can buy them. I'm buying from a local tackle shop, Lizard Tackle and Bait. But yeah, they're perfect for conga and ling. Now this does 
feel like an altogether better fish. Feels like a better fish because it is a better fish. Now that is a chunk. That's over 30 pound that. <laughs> yep, I'm happy to finish on that. Get him unhooked and I'll get a photo of him and get him back. Unfortunately, the wind had really picked up by this point, so the audio in this bit isn't very good. I don't mind finishing on that. Not much more to say than I hope you enjoyed joining us. All the very best.